study of God's Word. Today we will look into the third, fourth and fifth chapters of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 The fall now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. 3 But God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it. Or you will die, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree. And I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe, with painful labor you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you. You must not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you, through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. 18 It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. 19 By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Genesis chapter 4 Cain and Abel Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door, it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence, I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, 
Not so anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain made love to his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city, and he named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad, and Arad was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael was the father of Methushal, and Methushal was the father of Lamish. Lamish married two women, one named Adar and the other Zillah. Adar gave birth to Jabal, he was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock. His brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all who play stringed instruments and pipes. Zillah also had a son, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain's sister was Nama. Lamish said to his wives, Adar and Zillah, listen to me, wives of Lamish, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamish seventy-seven times. Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel, since Cain killed him. Seth also had a son, and he named him Enosh. At that time people began to call on the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter 5 from Adam to Noah This is the written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And he named them, mankind, when they were created. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. After Seth was born, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Adam lived a total of 930 years, and then he died. When Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Anosh. After he became the father of Anosh, Seth lived 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Seth lived a total of 912 years, and then he died. When Anosh had lived 90 years, he became the father of Kenan. After he became the father of Kenan, Anosh lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Anosh lived a total of 905 years, and then he died. When Kenan had lived 70 years, he became the father of Mahalalel. After he became the father of Mahalalel, Kenan lived 840 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Kenan lived a total of 910 years, and then he died. When Mahalalel had lived 65 years, he became the father of Jared. After he became the father of Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Mahalalel lived a total of 895 years, and then he died. When Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. After he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Jared lived a total of 962 years, and then he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he became the father of Lamish. After he became the father of Lamish, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Methuselah lived a total of 969 years, and then he died. When Lamish had lived 182 years, he had a son. He named him Noah and said, He will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground the Lord has cursed. After Noah was born, Lamish lived 595 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Lamish lived a total of 777 years, and then he died. After Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham and Japheth. From Paradise to Pain. Chapter 3 The First Sin, Adam and Eve. Chapter 4 The First Murder, Cain and Abel. Chapter 5 The First Family Tree, Seth. Overview What began as paradise is quickly spoiled by sin.
Satan, disguised as a serpent, tempts the woman by turning her gaze from God's bountiful provision, the many trees, to God's one prohibition, the single tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve's disobedience in eating from the forbidden tree results in their expulsion from the garden. The seeds of their sin quickly grow as their first son, Cain, commits the first murder. For generation after generation the downward spiral continues, setting the stage for God's judgment. Human depravity a state of corruption due to original sin held in Calvinism to infect every part of man's nature and to make the natural man unable to know or obey God. Inside the wages of sin 3 to 6 with sin, the long-term pain always outweighs the momentary pleasure. In the serpent's kingdom, that's a law as fundamental as gravity. But in the kingdom of God, the opposite is true, the pleasure of his presence, Psalm chapter 16 verse 11, always outweighs any momentary pain, Romans chapter 8 verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. Learning to see our temptations as a choice between temporary and eternal pleasures will help us overcome them. Inside prophecy of Messiah 315 from ancient times, Jewish rabbis interpreted this offspring of the woman to be the Messiah, Hebrew for the anointed one. While Satan would inflict a non-lethal blow on him, he would deliver a mortal blow to Satan. When Satan brought about the crucifixion of Jesus the Messiah, he sought to nullify this prophecy. Instead, the prophecy was fulfilled, God prevailed and Jesus conquered death, see Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 to 10 predicts the ultimate blow to Satan's head, when God will destroy him, and Jesus the Messiah will reign forever.